Hi everybody. I'm sorry that I can't be with you there in Stirling, um, but I've been stymied by a combination of French air traffic controllers and uh, EasyJet not having their planes in the right place. Uh, so I hope you're having a great conference so far, and um, sorry that I can't actually be with you in person. This paper is based on my doctoral research, um, which is looking at how youth workers use digital tools in their work. Um, and as a part of this journey, um, I have become very interested in activity theory and how that relates to uh, both youth work and informal education. And in particular, the double bind situation that we want to explore within this paper. Many people think of youth workers as volunteers who spend time in youth clubs playing table tennis and pool. This stereotype has been perpetuated by the characters of Rick Lemon from Sue Townsend's Diary of Adrian Mole or Billy Fane in Biker Grove. But the reality is very different and in the UK youth work is considered to be a professional discipline supported firmly by educational principles as demonstrated by the National Occupational Standards for Youth Work. Professionally qualified youth workers consider themselves to be educators rather than social workers or leisure and recreation providers. Youth work happens in youth centres, schools and colleges, parks, streets and shopping precincts, in fact wherever young people gather, and this can include digital spaces. Youth work methods include support for individuals, work with small groups and learning through experience. Youth work offers young people safe spaces to explore their identity, experience decision making, increase their confidence, develop interpersonal skills and to think through the consequences of their actions. This leads to better informed choices, changes in activity and improved outcomes for young people. However, the government agenda of deprofessionalisation in the education sector has hit hard in the context of local authority cuts. Professional youth work has never had a statutory basis, which makes it an easy target when savings have to be made in local authorities. Current austerity measures have also hit voluntary and community sector youth work as they used to receive grant aid from local authorities. One might think that youth work and youth workers would grab the tools available in the digital world with gusto, exploiting them in order to engage with young people and to enable improved outcomes. However, the picture is often very different. My research has often highlighted youth workers who lament what they see as a loss of contact or relationship with young people because of the digital world, as well as managers, policies and organisations who don't see a need to change their current practice to take account of the digital needs of young people. This is due to a variety of reasons, which include outdated policy and equipment and resistance to change. The di digital residence visitors model is possibly relevant in that those who might be termed digital visitors don't necessarily see a reason to engage digitally with young people in the same way that a digital resident youth worker might. Digital residents bring their own risks, using their own equipment and adopting platforms in the absence of policy without necessarily thinking through the ramifications. Some youth workers see their role as a provider of Wi-Fi and a means of access to machines in deprived areas, since young people don't have access through home or school. There are some excellent examples of good practice. The British Youth Council, V, the UK Youth Parliament. These are where young people are empowered to manage their own accounts and pages. Overall, digital youth work is not widely adopted, researched or written about. I've done a couple of chapters and I'm just looking at doing another agreement with the publisher as we speak, but otherwise there's not a lot out there. The research has used chat as an underpinning methodology alongside John Dewey's pragmatism. A survey involving about 30 youth workers um, have contributed to the data and 10 youth workers have been interviewed in the last couple of years. These were all digital residents and or early adopters and ranged from volunteer and part-time youth workers to senior management. This slide shows a typical response as related to the use of Facebook when mapped to a chat activity system. Overall, the respondents to the survey were using digital tools as follows. The top tools used were Facebook, YouTube, PowerPoint, custom websites such as organisational websites, video creation and Twitter. And these were used in a variety of ways but reflected the outcomes on this diagram. The most common examples of work 
were at the base of the triangle, which was enabling young people's access to Wi-Fi and the internet, particularly in deprived communities. Second, we had where awareness raising work was very prominent. For example, awareness of privacy settings, how to behave on the internet, safety, cyberbullying, and quite a lot about what Howard Rheingold would call crap detection, so enabling young people to become discerning users of the internet. Next, we had agency, where youth workers were working with young people to show them the wider potential, and where young people were starting to communicate, campaign, network, um, using the internet and digital tools, and getting some sense of being a part of democratic process. And lastly, there was the voice of young people. So where young people were really ba um, building on this idea of agency, and they really were starting to make a difference um, using digital tools, for example, Facebook pages to um, campaign against youth services being cut. So this is all very interesting, but actually the how is much more interesting because youth workers often face many challenges, not least a lack of resources in relation to their digital engagement with young people. So I'm going to pass over to Nadia now, who's going to explore some of these um, contradictions um, and hopefully give a critique about how chat can perhaps help us to see these things. Thank you for listening to my bit. And again, apologies for not being there.